Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video casts. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing their surgical clerkship rotation. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. In this episode, I am going to start a series of new videos on MCQs. So in each episode, I will be discussing 10 to 15 MCQs on a particular topic. So now today, I am going to start the first series of 10 videos <coughs> regarding scrotal swellings, the two only introduction. I have already made a video on the same topic, a didactic video, but this video is only MCQ that to regarding that particular this particular topic only. So I, you all know that I launched the YouTube channel Surgical Educator almost nine years ago. So far, this channel has 265 videos, 66.5 thousand subscribers, and 3.9 million views. I have created many playlists of videos for all surgical problems like stotal swellings, abdominal pain, obstetric jaundice, etc. I have covered the whole spectrum of general surgery, especially for <coughs> undergraduate medical students. Today, I am going to start a new series of videos discussing the MCQs based on each one of my videos one by one. In this video, I am going to discuss 10 MCQs exclusively from my first video in this channel on scrotal swellings introduction. 70% of these, I mean, questions will be MCQs are case-based questions and 30% are recall questions. Nowadays, you know, everything is case-based only they are asking. Not only in USMLE or UK MLA exam, even in NEET PG or NEET SS, majority of your questions are going to be only case-based questions. So that is why I have selected 70% case-based and 30% just recall questions. So you all know MCQs are used worldwide in all uh, international medical exams, both in the qualifying as well as in competitive medical entrance exams and <coughs> I need not emphasize the importance of MCQs to you. This series of videos will give you a systematic way of revising the whole spectrum of general surgery using appropriate MCQs. Since I am working as a full-time professor in a medical college in Malaysia, I can't spend more time in this channel. I may retire next year and then I will be a full-time online surgical educator. Then you can expect more number of videos, almost two or even three videos per week I can make because after retirement, I will be going to concentrate more on this channel and making quality videos for the medical students as well as the surgical trainees. Before going to discuss the 10 MCQs, I want you to watch the video, my video, that is the scrotal swelling introduction. All 10 MCQs are based on this video only. So I request you all to kindly pause this video 
click the below link to watch and learn about this particular scrotal swelling introduction video. You just click this link, watch that video first, learn everything in that video, and then come here again. After watching the video and learn the content, now let us discuss the MCQs now. Okay, MCQ number one in this, I mean, topic. Number one, first MCQ. Which of the following is a common acute painful cause of scrotal swelling? The options are A, varicocele, B, tars and testis, C, hydrocele, D, epididymal cyst. The correct answer is tars and testis. See, the tars and testis is an acute painful condition. If you have watched that video, you might have seen, I have divided all total swellings into two categories. Number one, acute painful conditions like tars and testis, tars and of testicular appendages, and acute epididymocytis. So here they have given only tars and testis, so our choice is tars and testis. <coughs> you might have seen the other classification Chronic painless scrotal swellings. Under this category, okay, we have hydrocel, epididymal cyst, varicocele, <coughs> all these things, and spermatocele. All those things will come under, and even testicular uh, tumor. That is also chronic painless condition. So, of, of course, it is a solid swelling, whereas the all other swellings, Majority of them are cystic swellings. So this is what I want to discuss. Each one of the options, I will discuss why it is not fitting with this, I mean the stem. Now, MCQ number two. The pampiniform plexus of veins is a component of which structure? A, testis. B, epididymis. C, vas deferens. D, scrotal contents. The correct answer is D, scrotal contents. The pampiniform plexus of the vein is one of the components of the scrotal content, which also include, I mean, the scrotal, scrotum includes testis, epididymis, and vas deferens. So, this pampiniform plexus is not part and parcel of testis or uh, epididymis or vas deferens. It is like all these three things, this is also one of the content of scrotal content, scrotum, yeah. Now, MCQ number three. Which of the following conditions is classified under chronic painless scrotal swellings? So, already we have discussed this, this one already. So, naturally, it is spermatocele is the correct answer. Spermatocele is a chronic painless swelling, whereas tars and testis, acute epididymocytis, and uh, the uh, tars and of testicular I mean, appendages are all acute painful swellings. <coughs> Coming to MCQ number four, the tunica vaginalis covers which structure in the scrotum? It is covering some structure, epididymis, testis, pampiniform plexus, C, D is dartasphasia. The correct answer, of course, is B, that is testis. The tunica vaginalis is the serous covering of the testis. It consists of two layers, parietal and visceral. So the hydrocele is collection of fluid in between this parietal and visceral layer of tunica vaginalis. Now, MCQ number five, which of the following is not a scrotal content. So previously they asked which is the scrotal content. Now they are asking which is not scrotal content. Okay, testicular artery, datas fascia, C, vas deferens, D is lymphatics. The correct answer is, of course, datas fascia. Datas fascia is a layer of the scrotum, but not 
one of the content of the scrotum. This you have to remember. The contents include testes, vas deferens, arteries, pampering complexes of veins, lymphatics. All these things are content, but data fascia is one of the layers of the scrotum. <coughs> MCQ number six. Hydrocele is associated with which characteristic finding? Acute onset, painless swelling, presence of fever. Number D, erythema of the scrotum. Of course, the correct answer is B, painless swelling. Hydrocele present as a painless swelling. Acute onset and fever are seen in conditions like epididyma ocaitis or even tarsen testis. MCQ number 7. Epididymosis is a differential diagnosis for which of the following? A. Tarsen testis. B. Testicular tumor. C. Acute epididyma ocaitis. D. Varicocele. Of course, the correct answer is testicular tumor. Explanation. Epididymosis and testicular tumor are both are painless condition. Okay, even though the epididymosis is a cystic swelling and testicular tumor is, an, uh, is a chronic swelling, but both are painless, slow-growing, chronic swelling of the scrotum. Both are chronic conditions of the scrotum. That is why this is the appropriate differential diagnosis for epididymosis. M MCQ8 <clears throat> Which of the following layers of the scrotum is the most superficial layer? <laughs> Cremastic fascia, internal spermatic fascia, skin, and the tunica vaginalis. The correct answer is, of course, the skin. Skin is the most superficial fascia, followed by other deeper layers like tunica vaginalis, an internal spermatic fascia and all. So, skin is the appropriate answer. That is the outermost layer. MCQ number 9. Which of the following is a true statement about varicose? A. It is a common cause of acute scrotal pain. B. It is typically associated with infertility. C. It presents with the erythema of the scrotum. D. It requires urgent surgical intervention. Okay. The correct answer is B. It is typically associated with infertility. <clears throat> Varicocele is a painless chronic condition often linked to infertility. It does not cause acute pain or scrotal erythema. But why infertility? That also I have to tell. Because of the presence of Pampinium complexes of the veins, the scrotal temperature is at least 3 to 4 degrees more than our core body temperature. And this increased temperature is not conducive for the production of sperm or spermatogenesis. The spermatogenesis will be affected because of the increased temperature of the scrotum and that is why the patients are going for infertility. Now, the last question. MCQ number 10. Cremasic fascia is a continuation of which muscle? Very, very good question. A. Internal oblique muscle. B. External oblique muscle. C. Transversus abdominus muscle. D. Data's muscle. So, cremasic fascia, the correct answer is internal oblique muscle. The crematric fascia is derived from the internal oblique muscle and forms part of the coverings of the testis. Okay. Internal oblique is giving internal uh, cremastic fascia. External oblique will give rise to external oblique aponeurosis. The transverses abdominus muscle will give <coughs> the internal spermatic fascia. Okay, data's muscle is not a content, that is the covering of the scrotum. So this completes the 10 MCQ for this one. 
So all the questions are only from the video which you watched. So every uh, week, whenever it is possible for me, because I cannot assure you that I can make it every week because I am working as a full-time professor in a medical college right now. So at, whenever it is possible for me, I will try to upload uh, a video, uh, the 10 MCQs. I, am, I will try to cover all my videos. There are more than 265 videos are there. M most of them are didactic videos, at least in these 180 are didactic videos. So I will try to, I mean, cover the whole spectrum of general surgery, all the MCQs we will, because nowadays the exam or the assessment, the majority of exams, they are asking only MCQs. They are not using the other method of assessment like MEQs, that is modified essay question or ASCII exam. That is, that is, they are not using it for any entrance exam. But recently I have written three essential books for any medical exams. So this is a book on mastering MCQ in medical exams. This is a book on mastering MEQs, that is modified essay question in medical exams. And another book is mastering ASCII in medical exams. So even if you are not have any chance during your entrance exam, actually in the course, definitely you will be having ASCII exam and maybe some of the medical schools, they may even have MEQs. So in this uh, description of this video, I'll give the link for all these <coughs> three books. These books are already published in Amazon. And you can go and click the link and you can get it. Actually, I have written many books, not only in medical subjects, even in other topics, I have written the books. So I have, I will give the link for all these books in different Amazon stores in the world. It is available in all stores uh, throughout the, uh, um, I mean, uh, many areas in the world. That is, maybe I will give the link for US Amazon store, the UK Amazon store and Australian uh, store, and then the Indian Amazon store. I'll give mainly these four links. You can click according to your uh, area and you can buy these books uh, from Amazon. So thank you very much for watching this video. I think if you think that these videos are very useful, kindly share these videos with your in your social media and like this video and subscribe for this video. And please click the bell button also to get notified regarding my latest uploads. So until we are going to meet in the next video, bye-bye.